Thank you very much, Commissioner Malmström. I'm sure the P3I approach will certainly offer a lot of uh, elements for uh, the, the discussion and the debate. Now, of course, I give the floor to um, Angelino Alfano, Minister of the Interior, representing the Italian Presidency of the Council of the European Union, former Deputy Prime Minister and former Minister of Justice uh, of Italy. Minister. Thank you very much, uh, dear Cecilia, and congratulations for your own intervention. Mr. President, colleagues and authorities, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why the Italian Presidency and the Commission together wanted this high-level conference on a security strategy for, for Europe is because the entire area of justice in the European Union is at a crossroads in its evolution. Indeed, even if the internal security strategy, as Cecilia quite rightly said, again, the microphone is being cut off constantly. Our strategy has made progress, but new and old threats mean that we have to act with determination and lucidity on a renewed internal security strategy for the years to come. This is what the European Parliament asked us to do in its resolution on an internal security strategy, and it is precisely what the European Council decided last June. But above, above all, it's a necessity for the security of our citizens, and that, after all, is why we're here and why we act at all. So we have to provide concrete follow-up to that. And the Italian presidency, therefore, at the informal Milan meeting on the 8th of July, showed its intent to develop conclusions on renewing the internal security strategy, which are to be submitted to the Justice and Home Affairs Council in December uh, and received consensus by all present. It's urgent. We have to move forward. Uh, but, of course, we have to do that, understanding the need for a revision process which be inclusive uh, and that it draw on the input from all the stakeholders. So, with the Commission, we had this idea of involving institutions, but also civil society, research and international organisations. All Europeans have to be involved because security is a common good which is constructed and defended by all together. Therefore, we need close analysis of the risk factors uh, and a coherent examination of possible responses. There is, I think, broad consensus on the threats and that the, the strategic objective of security, of a security strategy for 2010-2014 should preserve all that it has and build on it. We have to develop prevention, international cooperation, an exchange of information, innovation in various areas of law enforcement. We also have to attain these objectives and seek these objectives by appropriate legislation, but within a consistent framework which is capable of promoting full respect of fundamental rights, because without security there are no rights, and without rights there is no security. You need good integration between internal security and external security, uh, with uh, making full use of synergies between internal policies and the policies in other areas of European action. You need a solid sustainability uh, framework in terms of financing of the different sectors. This is a commitment which is a specific concern to the member states uh, uh, in terms of their budget provisions. A financial sustainability framework is necessary, particularly if you consider the fact that it's only very slowly that the European Union is emerging from the deepest economic and financial crisis for a long time and that the threats will, will not change uh, over the short term. 
we have to address them despite the financial crisis. We have to pay particular attention to research and innovation and in the training and education in all areas of law in enforcement because we must not drag our heels and be behind the terrorist and the criminal. The criminals are moving forward, the terrorists move forward. We must not lag behind. In concrete terms, what is necessary is not so much new rules, but uh, uh, full implementation of those existing rules. We have to be able to have monitoring systems for the results, which Cecilia uh, mentioned uh, a, a while back, the results uh, of uh, a study of our internal security strategy recently, and the idea is to have um, uh, the tools which make it possible to mon monitor the results. We have to assess those results, and we have to assess the improvement of operational effects of cooperation between the European Union, its member state, but also between the various different operational levels of the European Union. Allow me just a few very brief points about specific policies relating to what the Italian presidency intends to do and which we will focus on. First of all, in fighting organized crime, which has been strengthened by the economic crisis, we think it's essential to strengthen the fight uh, against money laundering and uh, the uh, penetration by criminal sectors into the economy. Then on cybercrime, something that we think is very important, because the European Union is a vast digital area where it's increasingly easy to permit to commit all sorts of crime, a crime, uh, economic crimes, uh, but, but also uh, the sexual abuse of minors and many other areas where digital criminality is on the rise. There are new ways in which these criminals act, and we need to fight against them in new ways. We need to make rapid progress in laws, referring to the PNR uh, directive, but also in operational areas. We need better security for our critical infrastructure of air transport to improve uh, joint assessment of threats and exchange of information, better response capability in times of crisis. Finally, uh, our security at our borders, which is a primary component, but at the same time a cross-cutting component of our security. We need to make very decisive advances uh, on smart borders. We need to increase the capacity within Frontex uh, to make sure that Frontex is uh, in good stead to be able to support the countries which, are, which come under the worst migratory pressures. And also we must be able to guarantee the proper functioning of existing uh, inter-member state solidarity mechanisms. Ladies and gentlemen, I move towards my conclusion by saying that we are living times of huge change, but at the same time of huge threats. Thirteen years have gone by since uh, the Twin Towers attack in New York, six years since the explosion uh, of the worst economic crisis since 1929, and four years since the start uh, of the so-called Arab Springs. And yet, despite the perversive nature of the consequences of those three shocks, the European Union has been able to preserve a high level of security without giving in, without giving up its democratic principles and the rule of law. And it's for that reason, because of the strengths that we've showed over those years in preserving democracy and the rule of law through some of the very difficult periods that we've been through, uh, uh, that, that is why I am confident that despite all those difficulties and, and despite our complex decision-making procedures, that over the years to come we will be able to preserve and strengthen the binome, security with freedom, because it's that combination, security and freedom, which is uh, uh, the, uh, the basis at the root of our leadership of the world. Thank you very much for your attention.